Hey guys, I'm a mom of four and our first two children weren't good sleepers and the third and fourth have been really good sleepers and have both slept through it six weeks. So this isn't a foolproof plan, but I wanted to share some tips that I've learned along the way to help your newborn sleep through the night. And the first one is, you might be surprised, but it's pray. Pray that God will help your baby sleep through the night and pray that you'll get rest. I think this is especially important when you're pregnant to pray over the baby before it's born. Um, but if you've missed that step, just pray. God hears you and it makes a huge difference. Number two, baby wear. We use a Moby wrap and I love it. It's like an artificial womb. They're snug, they're comfy, they're warm, they're upright, which helps a lot with colic and reflux and gas pains. The pressure of them being pushed up against you I think helps a lot with wind. Um, we just love it. Number three, Dunstan baby language. If you have not heard of this, you need to look it up. A few years ago, I think it was with our second baby, a friend lent us the DVD. I don't know if they still sell them, but I know there's an app that you can download called Dunstan baby language. It has the five different noises that a baby makes and what it means. This is not a joke. It really works. It really, really works. Check it out. Number four, know your tired signs. Our first baby was so overtired. We had no idea about tired signs. And he always used to cat nap. That's a sign of an overtired baby. If they're falling asleep and they're waking right up, they're falling asleep and they're waking right up. A newborn, in my opinion, a newborn shouldn't be awake hardly ever. Like, they wake up, you change them, you nurse them, they go back to sleep. They shouldn't be awake. If they're looking away from you when you're looking at them, if they're making fists, if they're doing the karate chop, that means they're overtired. Swaddle them and put them to bed. Number five, I think this is all about setup. So, if it's cold, we use a grow bag. Here's one that's really awesome from Bonds. It's got long sleeves. This one's by Plum. I really love it. It's super soft inside and out. There's different tog ratings for different weather. Um, in summer, we wouldn't use this, but in winter, it's a must have. Over the grow bag, we swaddle them. This is a swaddle by, it's called Smart Swaddle. I got it from Baby Bunting. It's huge and it's breathable because most of the swaddles that you buy at the stores are small and after the baby, well, after our babies are a week or two old, they don't fit into it anymore. This one, last them up until they're rolling over normally, which is when we stop swaddling them. So if you don't know how to swaddle, I'm gonna show you a quick demo. This is with my smart swaddle. Fold over the edge like that. You take your really cute baby and you put him in the middle. This is Adeline, she's seven weeks old. You tuck their arm under the fold here, making sure that they can put it up when you do it. Don't swallow them really tight with their arms down by their side because they don't really like that. Tuck it underneath. Put this arm under there. Tuck it under. And there you have a swaddled baby. So we co-sleep. We have a bassinet in our bedroom. I bought an extra mattress for it that's a lot softer than the mattress that normally comes with them. We also have the mattress just elevated a little bit so that their head's a bit higher than their feet, which I think helps with reflex problems. Make sure that their bassinet is soft and comfy. There are SIDS regulations about not having things inside the bassinet and making sure that all the blankets are tucked in and everything. But I also have a wool blanket that I firmly tuck into the edges of the mattress to make sure that they're warm and that it's comfy. I think it makes a huge difference. Also, at night when they wake up, we have a really dim nightlight. I don't use this lamp and we don't turn the bedroom lamp. I have like this pink um, nightlight I turn on so you can just barely see what you're doing. And I think that's important because if a bright lamp comes on, they think it's daytime and they get awakened a lot more. And make sure that you have good night diapers. So we use cloth diapers during the day, but at nighttime we use Huggies because I think they're awesome. We hardly ever have an issue with leaks. Make sure that it's on properly and it's a good diaper that can last the whole night if they don't wake up because you don't want them waking up because they're feeling wet. Number six, if we're not baby wearing, then during the day the baby doesn't sleep in the bassinet. We have them in something that's more upright, like a swing or a little bouncy seat.
I think that this being upright for the most part of the day helps them not build up a lot of wind throughout the day and then you have that crazy nighttime where they're just so unsettled and so uncomfortable because they have so much wind. If you're comfortable, you can use something to help like gripe water or Infocol once they're the proper age for it. Also, as a side note, I nurse my babies on a schedule and then I know when the baby's gonna wake up so I don't find myself in the middle of taking care of something else and all of a sudden I have a starving baby. I think this has really worked well towards helping them sleep through the night. So normally I'll feed them at 6 a.m., 10, 1 p.m., 4 p.m., 7 p.m., and then I'll probably feed them again before I go to bed sometime around 9 or 10. <clears throat> and then I feed them whenever they wake up throughout the night. I don't schedule up throughout the night. So those are my top six tips on how to help a newborn sleep through the night. I hope it helps you guys. See you next time.